All right, Flan, if you begin with an opening statement. Well, Tina must have gone right ahead of me because the mic's really low. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny, right? Um, <laughs> uh yeah i mean the, the start was my fault we we decided to kind of trick it up and we played uh basically a two-person zone and then three chasers and we left mule and she obviously made us pay um but despite that i thought you know uh, for the balance of the game we competed um you know too many too many easy baskets off turnovers really really hurt us i thought we'll need to clean that up and Thought there were times where we just either were tired or just you know didn't didn't do the job getting back. But uh, you know, because after that first stretch, I thought our half court defense for for a limited prep was pretty good. I mean, we had um, you know we had to take Tuesday off and then um, just had one practice. So that's part of why we you know took a risk with with trying to do something uh, different defensively to start the game, but. Uh, you know, and then offensively, we, you know, we, we obviously never had a rhythm. I thought obviously Temi played really, really well. Um, and we needed to get her a little bit of help. Um, but, you know, we just are with, with the number of guards that we have out, it's, it's not necessarily just their scoring, it's their passing that we need a little bit in terms of just getting, being able to get shots for some people who need to get shots. So, um, you know, it was a tough ass. I was a little, I was a little more pleased with our toughness and uh, competitiveness tonight or today than I was Monday. But uh, you know, hopefully we can, uh, uh, you know, end, end end the regular season right on Saturday. Uh, send our seniors out with a with a win, and uh, you know, and then go to the conference tournament and play as well as we can play. So. We'll start around the horn style. Um, Eric, I think, has dropped out, so we'll go Matt first. Matt, first question. Um, yeah, just what you thought in terms of uh, how Temi was able to be successful tonight after struggling in the first matchup. Yeah, I don't know. She got going downhill a little bit more, and um, I thought we did a better job. You know, we talked a lot about spacing, and I thought just they – and I think because – you know, they were playing some younger players. I thought they they were a little bit three more three-point line conscious uh, than they were the first time, which I think helped us uh, get to the rim a little bit more and get into the paint a little bit more. Um, but uh, I thought that was, you know, uh, a big factor. But, yeah, I just thought, you know, and, and they switch more screens than uh, – Marquette does. I mean, Marquette just tries to keep Lot on Timmy as much as they can. And so she had some maybe a little bit better matchups based on some of the switches. Um, but I thought she did a good job of, of attacking. And because sometimes Timmy can get going a little bit too much laterally. And I thought today she was better at, uh, you know, getting her hips toward the rim. John? I mean, this might be kind of an obvious question, but just when you're playing, a team like UConn that, that has so, so many good athletes, how, how hard is it to uh, not avoid or to avoid just getting sped up and, I don't know, rushing shots or, or maybe um, not being as sharp with, you, with your handle and your passing and precision? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I, th I thought you saw some nerves from our, some of our younger players, for sure. I thought, uh, you know, which you would have hoped – playing them the one time and then, you know, and, and, and really haven't come off a, a, you know, yes, DePaul and Marquette are not as good as UConn, but I felt like, you know, maybe if we'd have had one more day of rest and prep that, that, you know, we, we would have seen a little bit more of a carryover in terms of, you know, ball security and um, making, you know, like you said, being strong with the ball, but I, I do think we were, you know, we'd, we've been on the road four games and just, I, I thought we looked a little bit tired at, at, you know, not Tammy and not some of them, but um, I thought some of our younger players both played with a little more fatigue than, 
than I thought, but also, like you said, they were sped up and just playing, um, you know, playing tentatively. Back to you, Matt. How, how tough is Paige to deal with just because of, I mean, people are starting to worry about her scoring more, but it seems like the passing is her best skill, like her ability to facilitate and find people um, in scoring situations. Like how tough is she to, to defend? Because if you take one thing away, it just plays into the other. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's, she's obviously a special player. And, you know, as much as we watched, we saw her play a lot in high school because she, we recruited some kids off, <laughs> off her team. Um, and I've always thought she was a pass first, you know, not heavy, heavy pass first player, but definitely a pass first player um, who could score. And, and now I think, you know, with, with the way that they're um, put together, I think he's had to ask her to be maybe more of a scorer. And to her credit, she is, she's done that, you know, cause early in the year, I mean, we played him really early. Um, I know he was saying that he needed her to score more. And I thought, I thought, you know, just the more recent, game she's been way more aggressive shooting the three and obviously coming off those those middle handoffs and ball screens where she can just pop up from 15 to 18 feet and shoot it and you know the, it, it's tough because if you if the post player shows too high to contest then she's gonna dump it for a slip screen you know for a bounce pass layup and if you but if you play a lower coverage which we typically do because in our game, there aren't that many players that shoot that shot that well. So we've kind of been more of a drop coverage team and in inviting teams to shoot, you know, 16 to 18 footers. Cause that's the analytics say that's the, <laughs> that's the worst shot, but for her, it's a pretty good shot. So she's, she's gotten better even since we played. And, and I think they've utilized her better um, or, or at least figured out, how to get her to score a little bit more than, than earlier. John? Uh, I mean, we've talked about UConn in the league and the impact that it has, but I mean, it's just, it's just such a challenge. They're, 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 they've got a couple decades of, of prestige yeah. and history, you know, <laughs> like uh, the, what, what is your reaction to seeing them on the court and, but also having to compete against them? Um, well, I think it's, I, I think it's really good for the league, obviously, because it gives you a standard and it gives you, you know, we talked as a staff, it's like, you know, when you play them, that's an opportunity for growth and learning and exposure, you know, figure out, okay, not just, you know, and Connie said this, not just, not just what, where you, where you lack, but also what you're good at, because there's, you know, there's some areas where we were good today. And I think that can build but uh you know and then your players get to see what it's like to play um because i've said this about them i mean they're not they don't have they obviously have really good players but they play hard too and they make you uncomfortable and uh, at both ends they cut hard they they screen well they <coughs> excuse me um so you. thank you so you know you you enjoy watching them play because they don't like I like I said they don't they don't cheat the game they don't I don't think they take things for granted and I mean I they've mean, got some was, young kids sorry they've got some young players so they're making some mistakes probably defensively more than maybe some of the teams he's had but they're also uh, they're also pretty darn good at both ends and like you said it's 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 good you know obviously we would we would have preferred to be healthier to play them. I felt like, you know, a lot of, there was a little, for us, there was a lot of buzz about the game um, because it was their first trip here. And, you know, I think we were excited as a, as a group of players and a staff, but, you know, it certainly would have been nicer to have more people come able to watch, but also just have a little bit healthier roster. Um, And again, having said that, it was good for, some people who got to play that maybe wouldn't have played as much. Um, but, but certainly, you know, with, with Tatum and Rachel and Molly out, we, you know, those are three pretty good guards that uh, I think could have made the game a little bit, look a little bit different. We'll go one more question for each of you guys, Matt. 
Well, did, did John, do you have a follow up? Do you, did you want to say something? Okay. Um, yeah, just one thing I noticed throughout the game and honestly throughout that four game road trip that was pretty daunting that you guys managed to get three wins out of. This group's playing pretty hard still, um, even though there might not be something to necessarily play for, like, you know, the Big East titles out of reach. Uh, I don't know yeah. if yeah. I don't even know if you guys have an NIT in the women's game this year. Um, yeah. They do. And, and obviously you got to go through. You have to go through, you know, UConn or Marquette to probably get an uh, uh, an automatic bid. So the, the the task there is an uphill battle in itself. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of reasons not to play hard because there isn't much to play for as opposed to past years. What what what's your read on, you know, just how you're watching this team and the fact that they continue to play hard despite all those circumstances? Like, are you taking positives away from that, given that it's a young group that's doing a lot of yeah. those, making yeah. those hustle plays. Yeah, I think our, I think our freshmen have really jumped up the competitiveness in practice because they are, I mean, they're talented, but they're also, they also work hard and that, you know, that doesn't, that, that, that pushes our upperclassmen. And I, I mean, first of all, Temi's, Temi sets a tone and she's, she's a good leader and um, just her effort every day and her consistency, I think is, kind of sets the table, but also, you know, I said this to somebody the other day, I said, you know, the, there was obviously a lot of um, bad that came out of not having access to them in the summer and, and way more limited access to players in the fall. But I think the, the good part is that we've, our freshmen haven't hit the wall, maybe the way some freshmen do in February. I think you, you know, like, you always, it's not every freshman, but I think if you, if I look back and I say, okay, yeah, freshmen, you know, they come in a little, you know, we don't keep, keep them all summer, but they're here a little bit in the summer. And then, you know, all through the fall and they're the season, it's it, the season's longer. It's more demanding. They're adjusting academically. And a lot of times, you know, they'll, they'll kind of hit a wall or at least plateau in, in late January through March. And I think this group, because we maybe weren't with them as much and they, aren't as sick of me and, but, but they, you know, they, they had more of a break. And I think that, you know, I just think they seem fresher in terms of just their eagerness. Again, I thought we were just a touch tired today. Um, but I do think that their eagerness is, is maybe enhanced by the limited off season that we had. Just are you, John, is there a, or if you got is follow, there a, either one guys. Well, is there a win-loss component to the WNIT postseason, Glenn? Or? There is not. I don't okay. believe so. No. I don't believe so. I mean, I think the NCAA tournament is not – I don't even think you have to be over 500 to be in the NCAAs if I'm – That's correct. Uh, Glenn knows that even so. Uh, but, right. uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, you know, uh, and I think the NIT – I don't know if they've released exactly what – how many teams and what format it will be in. I think – I know it's going to be – I know the guys are going to be regional, right? And I think the women, I think, are going to maybe do. There's going to be eight four, sites, four eight-team regions, but um, I'm not sure. But okay, yeah, I mean, we're playing at a level that's, you know, for 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 who we've lost. I mean, I'm I'm not discouraged by the level at, at which we're playing, and um, you know, so hopeful that hopeful that we can put together a good performance Saturday and you know, maybe there is an opportunity after, after the conference tournament. Anything else, John? Matt, you want one more? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. All right. Appreciate, Appreciate it. You, See ya. Hey, thank you, Glenn. Thank you both. See ya. Thanks, Glenn. Bye, Matt. See you, John.